Alright, do you want me to hear it one more time or? Yeah, one more time. Third time. Almost me. My son is hiding behind the moon, as if I could never recognize that nostalgic gleam in home. I saw you in your facade of oblivion as, a sh as I shouted and spewed arrows through your bones, only to be rebuffed by the epidermis. In what seemed to be an eternity, you elusive and anomalous soul. So easily beguiled in her reign as an expanding pelvis relates the pain of my should have been echoes of before you. Oh, spectrum of my possibility. Why have you forsaken me and debased me? Your radiance, the soul of my shoe, dancing throughout the earth, kissing man, my God, who does not know my name or cares to remember me. Okay. Okay. So, can you pass it back? <laughs> okay, so that's. that's... Yes. What? Yes, yeah, so much. respond to this poem. What is the poem telling us how we feel about it? That's the think, first thing. I think it talks about Bert, the Bert, Bert one, Okay, so the process is one person speaks at a time so we can all benefit from your genius. So it speaks to what? I, I think it's the Bert, it sounds like a baby in the womb uh, trying to get the first branch of life or something like that. Or something like that. Alright, anybody else has another impression? I the impression that there's, there's a story of, yes, um, of, of childbirth, but some sort of, not in the best of circumstances, there's some, there's some, um, possibly animosity between the child, the, 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 the mother, the child, the father, the child, um, so I, I grasped that, the, grasped that from the last couple of lines, I wasn't, too sure about maybe it's because I wasn't too sure whether I was supposed to read on or it was two separate statements um, being read. What the last two lines it was a separate sentence from the third to last line, if you understand what I'm saying. All right, but, um, um, it's very visual. Um, it might be one or two statements, it might be bordering, bordering on, on, on cliche, but I think, generally speaking, I, I, I was intrigued by the imagery, the imagery of it. Yeah, so. Okay, other comments? Yeah, I think it's interesting. Other comments? I was, I was thrown in so many directions this new day. Of course, I got the idea of birth, the new life. And sometimes I feel that um, this child wasn't actually born, right? Uh, this whole idea of abortion and, 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 and somewhere, but I couldn't put my hand on exactly what, what is it that I was thinking, but I, I knew there was something with life or, or death, something here. So, anyway, I still can't put my hand on All right, anybody else? Okay, significance and originality. Is it an honest attempt as to express a thought, belief, or or feeling? Sorry, that's called the feeling effectively. Do we say yes? I, I would I would like to get that um critically analyze it. I would I to critically analyze it. I would say that she cut some of the voluptuous words, word in. It was too much, it was too compact in, in a short piece of a whole lot of big words. All right, so um, the, the, what I'm hearing here from, every, is everybody in the room absolutely clear about what this poem is about? No, no. no. Right. So we have two things. One, we, we, we really needed to see the poems, um, so, so you can actually look at it and interpret it for yourself. Because we talked about the poem as text and the poem as performance. Uh, but even if you hear it, if somebody were reading it, the poetry reading, 
for instance, right? Um, you, you only get an opportunity to hear it one time if it's being read as a performance. And um, so the clarity of what it really, really, really means, I mean, a poem can operate on very many levels. So, but we are not 100% clear about, you, you're going to get an opportunity to respond just now about to tell us what it means. Now, Vanda and, and Dr. McDonald have been reading this thing. Um, and may have some comments. Go back there. I really, I really, there's one thing I want to say first of all. I read a poem much better than I hear them. Yeah. And I like the idea of not being the person to read it more than once. Uh, even then, I prefer to read it here. Having heard it and having read it, I have to say my first reaction is I like the poem very much. Um, I'm not quite sure what the meaning is. Many meanings go into my mind, but that's no bad thing. Because uh, as, um, as Martin said, as I said in my initial talk, what the poem having been released to us, it means, what it means to me, it means now as much as it means to the poem. And uh, therefore, the fact that I don't know exactly what it means, I'm very interested in it. But all sorts of very important themes come to me and give me ideas. Uh, certainly birth, certainly perhaps an aborted birth. Uh, then I come into the whole idea of God and man, God the Father, God the Son, crucifixion, etc. All sorts of things begin to come into the in that last paragraph. God is God. that a person abandoned. Now it might be an abandoned child in the womb, it might be an abandoned uh, son of God on the cross. All sorts of things come into my mind and I would like to further investigate my own mind about this point, which I have to repeat, I like a lot. Right, thank you. Vanda? Yes, I think that the, um, the first line, I think, draws you in. My son is hiding behind the moon. I mean, I love that opening line. I think it's, 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 it's beautiful. I Can would... I just say one? I'm sorry to interrupt. But that first line struck me well because my son is hiding behind the moon. Yeah. I have the moon, the big belly, and the sun <laughs> inside. Mm -hmm. And so the sun behind the moon inside. All sorts of things immediately struck me. <laughs> I don't know whether the poet had that in mind, but to me, it had both those meanings in one hand. I saw. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. I mean, I, I felt it was some kind of fit in time in her life with suggest some kind of darkness that she was going through. Yeah. So, mm, that, that's, that, that's more how I read it. I think it's interesting about the, the religious imagery. I think it's interesting about the lost child and so on and so on. But when I first read it, it was something like that, which almost me, something going on at the, at, the, at the deep emotional level in which there is something not yet released, you know, so the idea of the eclipsing of the, of the shadowed me, almost, you know, the title is almost me, and so on. So that's how I would say, but it is cryptic, as I said, I don't myself get the full mention of it. I would just say that that beautiful, my son is hiding behind the moon, as if I could never recognize that nostalgic thing of old. Now you see, I would have left those two lines out. I would have used the word nostalgic, and then green is okay, but it's like, we did this, I have Ian, <laughs> edits of his book, and I say, Ian, take out the hands. He said, yes, yes, I, I, I'm bad with hands. Let me take out all these hands. And it's the same thing, don't over explain. Because sometimes when you over explain, you end up actually obfuscating, that's a big word, meaning you, you kind of, you over explain, yes, and then the actual, the essential poetics gets lost in the over explanation, you know, and then it kind of confuses you. I think you know, funny, that's oh, the difference between prose and poetry. Yes. In the prose, you keep worrying and telling a whole lot yes. of words. 